We're recording. We are recording. Hello, my name is Jim Davis, and this is Annalise Bennett. Hi, everyone. Uh, and our presentation today is entitled The Joys of Problem Posing, Developing Critical Literacy for the Early Childhood Classroom. So critical literacy and critical race theory are currently ongoing subjects in a uh, larger culture war that, if anything, I think the need for us to more fully understand these theories. Uh, critical literacy itself is bound to the tradition of Freire, Marx, and Hegel in terms of understanding the material conditions that we find ourselves in and working from there to try to create a more equitable society. Uh, and I believe that the, the foundations of critical literacy uh, is treating our students not as subjects, but as growing people with their own curiosities and areas of expertise and remaining open to learning as much from them as they learn from you. Uh, so the purpose of this presentation is to hopefully give you a better understanding of critical literacy and help you bring that practice into your classroom. So for critical literacy, the first question that we have to ask is, what is the purpose of education? Uh, Paulo Freire thinks that uh, the purpose of education is humanization, which is the a movement towards embracing freedom for both the oppressed and the oppressors. Uh, Freire uh, echoes Hegel and Marx in terms of thinking of history as an ongoing struggle uh, between uh, the oppressor and the oppressed. Um, and he thinks that the only way in which uh, we can become more fully human is for this struggle to play out and for the, uh, the oppressors to fully grasp, uh, for the oppressed to fully grasp their freedom uh, and, and liberate the oppressors as well. It's the realization that the world is created by people and can therefore be changed by people. Uh, and as Freire says, uh, the pursuit of full humanity cannot be carried out in isolation or individualism, but only in fellowship and solidarity. So the first model that Freire notes is the banking model, which is sort of the most common uh, model of education in, in Western uh, education, which, as he says, in the banking concept of education, knowledge is a gift bestowed by those who consider themselves knowledgeable upon those whom they consider to know nothing, projecting an absolute ignorance onto others, a characteristic of the ideology of oppression, negates education and knowledge as processes of inquiry. Uh, it's known elsewhere as didactic education, and you know it's it's the model in which the uh, the teacher is a, a font of expertise, depositing this knowledge into the empty brains of our students. And if I and Freire agree that that's not good enough. <laughs> the method that Freire uh, proposes is called the problem posing method of, method of education which is the posing, of the posing of the problems of human beings in relation with the world. It's intended to be dialogical in nature as a conversation between a teacher learner and a group of learner teachers. And it's supposed to position students as critical co-investigators in dialogue with their teacher. Uh, and it's important to note that Freire doesn't just see this as a tactic or a way of increasing test, or, test scores, but as a way of interacting with the world and of seeing the world. So some ways to practice and apply this um, pedagogy inside of your elementary school classroom is to view multiple forms of media and hold class discussions. By viewing multiple forms of media, you're allowing students to have a wide variety of what they're being exposed to. If you're only exposing your students to the same um, amount of information, they might not be as engaged with it. In having students conduct their own research about topics of personal interest, this will allow students to be more interested in the topic, be more engaged in their schoolwork, and it furthers their classroom involvement. And lastly, challenging students to take social action. It's one thing to talk about something in class, but it's another thing to encourage your students to make that actual change. So some resources that aid critical literacy inside your classroom is asking a lot of questions. Ask questions that lead students to think critically and assess all aspects of the information. This is done by asking open questions. You have to ask, how does it impact? Who does it impact? Why does it matter? And how does it affect the reader? And what do you think about it? Giving students identity in what they are reading or what they are viewing is very important about how they can assess it critically and use it to make changes in the world. 
And the last and most important resource is viewing educators and students as both sharers and holders of knowledge, creating a collaborative environment and a collaborative um, curriculum. So for our critical literacy lesson, I'm going to start out by um, sharing this video and um, there's no audio, but I think that the video does an amazing job um, just presenting this deep um, topic. get this to close. Oh, I might have to, oops. Oh, there it goes. Well, <laughs> I guess my screen's gonna be showing now. Sorry guys. Um, but so for this critical literacy lesson, using technology is a tool that can create and lead to critical thinking. While that video didn't have any audio, that video just gives such a powerful message to students and to all the viewers. So to start out this lesson, you would share the video A Whale's Tale. And then you can start by asking, um, asking students open-ended questions. What does the video show? What can we think about it? And what can we do about it? See, since the video doesn't have audio and it's in an early childhood classroom, I'm more than positive that all the kids are gonna be asking questions about why isn't there audio? What did the kid boy, kid do? Why was the whale sad? And that is just one way that this can lead to further critical thinking. And the next step you can do in this lesson is allow your students to use the internet as a tool for researching, researching sustainable communities and strategies. And by doing this, students can create an action plan to remote in their community to have real um, action in what they're learning. In the researching that the kids can do, you can do this in a way of having a research project that students can 
present to their classmates that they each choose to do a different form of recycling. Or this can be something that they present to the school district to encourage their classmates, to encourage their community members, and to encourage um, just all um, the school staff and faculty to participate. And this lesson can be used with a variety of ages in a variety of concepts by, by sharing a different video and asking deeper and maybe more meaningful questions that relate specifically to that video. So these are some of the additional materials and additional readings that we recommend that you guys can read if you are seeking any additional information. So I highly recommend Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed. I think it's the cornerstone of critical literacy. Uh, Hilary Jenks's article, Critical Literacy's Ongoing Importance for Education, mm -hmm. is a good resource for looking at how critical literacy is developing uh, through the 21st century. And Vivian Vasquez's book, Technology and Critical Literacy in Early Childhood Education, is a good way of examining uh, basically what we talked about in our lesson plan. So in conclusion, Critical literacy seeks to move from the banking model of education towards a more problem posing model of education where students and teachers are viewed as equals and they're both co learning alongside of each other. And why do we need critical literacy Well, we need critical literacy to establish relationships between materials to understand the author's motives and perspectives and to gain a deeper understanding of what the meaning of literacy is. Um, without critical literacy people aren't able to assess the world and able to bring about those social changes because they don't know or realize them, the issues. And dialogue is a key element to having these critical conversations in the classroom. There must be solidarity, equal grounds and mutual respect among teacher, students, and all, along, all each other. The classroom needs to be a safe environment where all participants feel safe to share their beliefs and it must um, have respect for people who may come from a biased um, perspective and using that respect to correct them in a beneficial way. And as Freire shares, um, I share two of his quotes, education does not transform the world, education transforms people and people transform the world. I just think this is super encouraging for all teachers to know that you might not feel as if you are changing the world inside of your classroom, but you are creating um, changers of the world. And all education practices implies a stance on the educator's part. And I think this is so important to just remind ourselves and to think of is that everything that we share in your classrooms um, and even in like the hallways of everything has an impact on the students and they remember everything you're saying so just remembering your stance in the classroom is very important on how it impacts your students. And these are our resources. And thank you for watching our video. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. In the comments, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't think I stopped recording. Yep.